Good morning, everyone. Bonjour, marhaba. Thank you for having me. Let me please start by telling you the story of a Palestinian refugee named Mohammed. He grew up in Khan Yunis camp in Gaza, run by UNRWA, where he attended school. Talented and enjoyed singing, he would put on shows for his family and friends, obviously performing at weddings. The people in his neighborhood simply adored him. So it was a shame that nobody out of his city had heard of him. Until 2013, that is. Now, in the MENA region, everyone knows him as Mohammed Asaf, the very first Palestinian winner of Arab Idol, which is the Middle Eastern interpretation and adaptation of Pop Idol, the global TV franchise. He made a grueling two-day journey to Egypt to audition for Arab Idol. Due to restrictions and delays at the border, he had actually missed his auditions. If it were not for a fellow Palestinian contestant who gave him his entry ticket, he would have never made it to the program. To this day, Asaf's win remains one of the most memorable and significant moments in recent Arab TV history. Why? Simply because it offered hope to millions of Arab youngsters who identified themselves with him through his story and rise to fame. He's a self-made man who had to endure incredible hardship to be where he is today. Despite endless conflict in Israel, Palestine, Asaf's win let everyone forget their troubles for at least one night and celebrate. You can imagine, there were huge celebrations on that night. It was like nothing we had ever seen before. Following his Arab Idol win, Asaf was appointed by the UN as a youth ambassador for Palestinian refugees. Through his uh, uh, plight, he helps refugees, supports them, and obviously raises awareness. He's basically mentoring the youth of today, those who are in the same situation he was in a couple of years ago. There is no better role model than this. And there is no better role model than this, especially in a region that is in very much need of positive role models in all walks of life. Asaf's Arab Idol win made us, as a defining moment, realize how much of a responsibility we have in media and broadcasting to contribute to positive change in the Arab world. So, my question, despite the past and current turmoil, in the Arab world. Is the future possible? How are we going to shape the future? And how are we going to be shaped by it? Ask any average Middle Eastern millennial today, and they would tell you they'd rather live abroad than in the Arab region. And you can't really blame for that. You can't blame them for wanting to live abroad. The Arab world's social, political, economic, geopolitical components are close to, if not at, a breaking point. We're in a climate where we can't get through a single day without bad news, mostly linked to immense human sufferings, linked to cyclical wars, terrorism, destruction, despair, and other factors including but not limited to youth unemployment, to brain drain, illiteracy, poverty, you name it. And the worse the news, the faster it travels, it seems. In fact, 90% of news in our region is bad news. And we've had to endure 
69 years of this, from the eruption of the Arab-Israeli conflict back in 1948 to the Arab Spring in 2011, and now to the current Syrian crisis. In the Middle East, we're constantly battling with a no we cannot culture that seems to be ingrained in us from a very young age, as opposed to the yes we can mantra. Going forward, we're faced with two roots. The one of fear, hatred, destruction, despair, lost opportunities, and the one of hope, creating positive change and opportunities for the generations to come. Look at the recent situations created out of fear and identity crisis. From Brexit in the UK, to the election of Trump and the travel ban in the US, and to the rise of right-wing factions and populist parties in Europe. When Trump was announced as a US president-elect, I posted and I spotted this post by the actress Aline Quincy. I quote, hate won an election, but I will not let it win my heart. Racism won an election, but it will never be allowed in my presence. Misogyny won an election, but I will help find a way to eradicate it. Divisiveness won an election, but I will continue to build a bridge. An election is over, but the results will not stop me from fostering understanding, love, kindness, and a better future for all." Unquote. Out of fear, hope, I definitely know which route to choose to build a better future, a more cohesive one, which is something I greatly admire about France. And please, don't take France for granted. This is an amazing country that is worth being preserved and worked for. While I appreciate some of the current issues pertaining to the Middle East are much harder to deal with, and that the recent refugee crisis brought with it a security imperative to Europe, I still see top quality education, entrepreneurial zeal, intellectual stamina, innovation, and joie de vivre here in France, among others, obviously. Ahead of the 2017 French elections, for every med social media post promoting fear, I'm reading tens of posts by French youth promoting hope and tolerance, thus refusing to bow down to simplistic labels or stereotypes. And that is fantastic to see. One of the other things I greatly admire about France is the fear competition for greatness. France has some of the best business schools in Europe and in the world, for instance, producing top-notch graduates. There's a lot of competition to get to the top and enjoy a better quality of life. There is definitely hope and positive drive here in France. And despite our political issues and challenges, we can still learn from the French model to reignite the lost Arab dream, based on value-based politics, structural reform, education, knowledge, civil service, entrepreneurship, and obviously, innovation. One recent report by a UN agency estimates that the Arab Spring unrest of 2011 has cost the region's economies $614 billion in terms of losses. Syria alone in its sixth year of conflict has suffered GDP losses and capital losses of 249, uh, 200, sorry, and $59 billion. And then there is our refugee crisis, obviously. Looking at Syria, about 11 million citizens had to, to leave their homes since the outbreak of the civil war. A further 13.5 million citizens need humanitarian aid inside their country. So talk to some of the Arab youth today, and they will tell you simply that they wish Arab Spring did not happen. Better the devil you know than the evil you don't.
right? Well, I find this incredibly sad. Why should our youth choose between either freedom or stability, mediocrity or corruption, staying home, becoming a lost generation, or immigrating, or even worse, going down the route of extremism? Why? It's a devastating lose-lose situation. Obviously, we should not have to build the future of our youth based on the recipe of the yesteryears. The one of ignorance, of extremism, of little or no distribution of wealth, lack of knowledge, immense human suffering, and limited contribution to the digital age. We have a place in the world, but we need to act fast. Together, we should build bridges between East and West instead of building a wall. Since 1991, the Satellite Broadcasting Group for which I work has been ahead of the curve, enriching the lives of millions of Middle Easterns every single minute of the day with hope, not fear, empowering them with premium content across all genres, eliminating the rhetoric that promotes hatred and violence and extremism, and reflecting on the realities of our complex world. If it weren't for the media, for example, Muhammad Asaf wouldn't have heard of Arab Idol. If it weren't for a show like Arab Idol, Asaf wouldn't be or wouldn't have become the singing star he is today. Imagine, 60% of the Middle East population is under the age of 30. We should continue to offer them hope in the current climate. We need to nurture and strengthen the rule of law, justice, public and private liberties, development, good governance, and tolerance. I'm a great believer that this could be accomplished through positive leadership, structural reform, and engaging in cross-cultural, cross-religious dialogue around the world. And we need the media more than ever right now to help achieve all of this, but mostly to keep the flame of hope alive. My friend and mentor, Professor Gassan Salame, former dean of PSIA at Sciences Po in Paris, gave a speech in 2015 called The Age of Storms, in which he focuses on the after effects of Arab Spring. I highly encourage you to look it up. But let me tell you there's a paragraph that always strikes a chord with me. I quote, Staying speechless breaks the very rules of humanity and reveals how we shoulder no responsibility. The world will not forgive our mental laziness or our attempts to escape our responsibilities towards what we're doing to one another and to ourselves." Unquote. And that's why the future depends on every single one of us here in France and elsewhere in the world. We have the power to create hope and positive change. We have the power to eradicate fear. So let's imagine for a while a world where hope wins over fear, where a young fashion designer of very humble beginnings dazzles with his creations, where a teenage girl from a troubled city amazes with her angelic voice, where a talented chef impresses with his culinary skills, and finally, where a veiled Muslim woman from a rural village wearing her hijab is able to win a singing contest watched by 100 million viewers. That world exists. I've seen it happen on our local adaptations of Project Runway, of The Voice Kids, of Top Chef, of The Voice, and many others. But I want to see it as the norm, not the exception. I want to see it as the norm, not the TV exception. I want to see it reflected in every aspect 
and key aspects of our daily lives. Really, I want to see the deferred dreams of the Arab youth come to reality, finally. And obviously, I want to see fearless hope win over fear. جماعة الوقت خلص يلا النهارده بجد يوم مهم جدا فضى ام بي سي الامل صناعات كميات كبيره من الجاكيت وقدرت اساعد اللاجئين السوريين في المخيمات عرفت انه رح شارك بذا فويس كيتس حسيت انه في عندي امل انا ببكي ومن قلب محروق عبلادي وعودادي اللي صاروا فيها غراب نحتفل بأحلى صوت بالعالم العربي بالموسم الثالث نداء جرارة محمد عساف محمد عساف a 23 year old from Gaza was crowned this year's Arab idol he's been made a special ambassador for the UN refugee agency goodwill ambassador for UNRWA it's first and so far only goodwill ambassador He became a symbol of hope, Muhammad Asaf. Today, the one for you will achieve your dreams. Dream. And don't let anyone stop you in front of your dreams. Thank you very much.